On today's episode of Amanda Felix Eats, we'll be taking you guys along with us to Hawaii's annual new product and food show. And guys, we're super excited because we're going to be supporting our local businesses and we will be judging the local moko contest. So you guys don't want to miss this one. Oh, we like it. Gravy all over. They did this one, right? Let's get in there. Let's get eating. Let's see who reigns supreme. What's going on, Foodie Ohana, and welcome back to the channel. And for today's episode, we'll be checking out Hawaii's annual product and food expo. Today, we're actually invited to judge their local moko contest. So we're going to be doing that as well today. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the whole video. We're taking you along for the experience, and we cannot wait to be eating all the Ono foods. And of course, with all that awesome food and goodness, we had to bring reinforcements. The Vaughn will be joining us today. It's Thank her last everyone. fall break weekend, right? Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> so we're gonna make it epic. So let's get going because we're pretty hungry. We haven't eaten yet. And the lines look like it's building up real quick. So let's go. Let's go. For today, we are here at Blaisdell, Neil Blaisdell Center, where a lot of the concerts are held and, of course, expos such as this one. And, of course, we have to bring the Vaughn with us. You know, there's going to be a lot of showcasing of food. I'm kind of curious what new products Hawaii has to offer. And like Amanda did mention earlier, we did not eat yet, so we are starving and we cannot wait to try all the awesome, different local grinds out there. What are you looking forward to, Yvonne? I don't know. I've never been to this before, so I'm kind of excited. Neither have we. Alright guys, so we are finally in. Guys, there are a ton, and when I mean a ton, I'm not exaggerating. There are also, a ton we of met a lot of subscribers too. Oh yes, we met a lot of subscribers in the front. Mahalo so much guys for the support. And uh, we hope you're enjoying the expo as we are. Or we just got in, so we're gonna enjoy it. So first off, I wanna say that it looks like there's a lot of food vendors and also a lot of product vendors. So I see like beef jerky, I saw a lot of toys at the front, and a lot of people that we have actually filmed before. Yeah, we'll link them A lot them of down vendors here. that we've featured yes. before in the past at a lot of the night markets that we've gone to. Let's get into it, guys. Let's go. We're starving, so we're probably going to start with some awesome grinds first. Filipino food. So it looks like the show is split up into three different segments. The first area we walked into, hey, <laughs> the first area we walked into is mostly just the food area. We're currently in the, looks like a product area, and then there's gonna be more products on the other side back there. The plan of attack is we should get some grinds, drinks, and then we'll check out the products after. And then of course, see which local moko reigns supreme. We decided to come early because we knew that if we didn't eat early, we wouldn't have room for the local moko. So we're here to grind, let's go. <laughs> it's like spicy mayo kind of. Uh, not too spicy, just a little flavor. Okay. But it's especially made sure to be lighter, so it doesn't break your, you know, hurt your mouth. Right, 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 cut the roof, yeah. <laughs> so you guys make your own chips too then? Yeah. so much, Kalani. Oh, all the guys, thanks for coming out. Of course. Oh, my local and your river. There's a lot of great vendors on here, guys. All along. Okay guys, this is poke chos, as he told us not to say poke nachos, guys. So Kalani uses fresh sashimi grade 2 ahi for his poke. And he said he doesn't do any grill frills type of ahi poke. It's very simple. He makes his own tuck one. He makes his own kabayaki sauce. He uses high quality ingredients. He even makes his own chips. So we're gonna try it out. I didn't get to try the samples. That's a beauty right there. Me too. Just kidding. Cheers. Mm. Whoa. The fish is very clean tasting. It does have a chew to it as well. I feel like I'm getting a lot more of the sauce, like the sweet chili and the kabayaki. Very, very fresh. Now I'm gonna try poke and a chip. Okay, that's the poke on the chip. Now I know 
why he says to eat it with the chip. It goes so well with the chips. Wow. At this point, I'm just eating because I'm hungry. Maybe I'll give this piece to Felix. Oh, that's a little bit of everything on there. Right, so Amanda was doing the B-roll while I was talking to Kalani, so I kind of know more about the ingredients on here, but he takes very, very meticulous care in each and every individual ingredient he puts. Like the Ito Wakame, he let us try each things individually earlier, and it was very fresh tasting. Everything adds a component to ultimate medley of poke bite. So this is like the awesome, perfect bite right here. Oh, bro. The fish is so fresh, you can see. It's translucent. There's none of that sinew that you have to chew and spit out. Very fresh. It is wonton chips, but it's not so hard where it cuts the roof of your mouth. It's very delicate. Just enough rigidity to hold all that flavor. Even down to the takuan, like he was mentioning, he makes himself. So next stop, we're gonna try Bada, Bada's barbecue. I think it's a take on Badass, maybe? I don't Bada? know, we gotta talk story. Or Bada's barbecue. Like Bada Bing? But Bada Bo? They did mention they ran out of their brisket plate. That's their popular seller, so unfortunately. But she did say the pulled pork sandwich is a, a close runner up, so we're gonna try that, guys. Bada's. Bada's. Bada's barbecue. Yeah, like a yeah, real Bada. Smoked over for 12 hours over lights you would. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Bye. So nice meeting you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you guys. So, correction, it is pronounced Bada. So it's Bada's barbecue, guys. I already knew. Bada, like Bada Bing, Bada Bong. Oh, whoa, whoa. I thought it was like kind of... Oh, hi! How are you? <laughs> Good, how are Good. you? How's it going? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. We featured you guys at the uh, Kakaako. Yeah. Yeah. We, we saw your review. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, no oh, problem. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. Aww. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. too. So, what were we doing again? Oh. Um, this is Bada's barbecue. Yes, Bada's. Like, like I said, Bada Bing, Bada Boom. And Bada okay. Bing, Bada Boom. This is their curry and smoked prime rib plate. Oh my goodness. And this is their pulled pork. And again, we want to thank them so much for watching us. She did say that she does watch our videos and stuff. So thank you so much. Big shout out to you guys. We are super excited. They do make their curry in house. They smoke their meats 12 hours over lychee wood. And yeah, they said the pulled pork is the best because they have a bourbon, what would it, what a spicy bourbon sauce. A spicy bourbon mustard barbecue sauce. mustard sauce. Yeah. It looks amazing. That's actually the thing I wanted to try the most. I'm just gonna go in for the burger. We're running out of battery, so. Hey, I'll be open. We gotta go. Maybe real the max quick. salad, I gotta go on my plate. Oh. oh my god, you guys, this thing is huge. It's massive. Oh, it is massive, you guys. Do you see the. Oh, I'm oh, even man, dropping pork. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go in for it. What do you think? Can I go in? Yeah, go, go. Mmm, mmm. That dressing or that sauce on there, nice mustardy kick, a little bit of sweet. You gotta try it, it's so good. My hands, you guys, it's shiny. This is like expert level three filming right here, guys. <laughs> yeah. We're literally standing in the corner, but oh my goodness. Mmm, so porky, so tender. That sauce, oh my goodness, that sauce is amazing. It's like a slightly more spicy mustard, Dijon mustard. I love the sweetness and sourness of the added pickles in there. The bread is just enough to hold everything in place. Mmm, mm. that the sandwich is the winner. Pork. We just need fries for that or something. This is prime rib, right? Or smoked brisket, I think. Oh, this is smoked brisket. Sorry, I went way ahead of myself. Go in for it. Need a knife? No, no knife needed. Ooh, it looks so tender. Mmm, the smoked brisket is so tender. Oh god. Yeah, you don't need a knife, guys. Going in with the curry. Ooh, look at that curry, you guys. Do you see it? Curry rice. Ooh. The curry is mm. on the a little on the lighter side, mm -hmm. but the meats are where it's at. The brisket is so tender. Like Felix said, you don't even need a fork. Very juicy, slightly smoky, but I feel like the curry does kind of pull away from that, but very good. I mean, the curry um, masses the smokiness of the brisket a little bit. And I wish we got the brisket just by itself. But the curry, 
it's smoky now because of the brisket so interesting the same peppercorn on the rub they're using a the max salad amazing i taste some mustard in here too herbs has like mm. a sour mustardy note to it this is a1 max salad guys it's very creamy it's still nice and cool too balances really nicely with the hot meats definitely guys check them out as always we're gonna leave all the links down in the description below and we did run into a bunch of friends whom we have actually reviewed before and they wanted us to try some stuff so we're gonna show you guys that i'm not sure if you guys remember when we went to the kakaako night market we did get hometown barbecue that night and they are here today and they are so gracious enough to allow us to try this it literally says thank you for your review and guys if you haven't checked it out though check out that video but i gotta show you this plate it's, what's in the plate it's freaking heavy but here we go oh if only i could get yvonne's reaction from the side <laughs> just as i was wishing for a brisket here comes another plate of brisket. Oh my goodness. That's not brisket, right? Is this pork belly or brisket? Oh, this is the pork belly, actually. If Come you on. guys remembered, I actually liked the pork belly. If you guys yeah. remember. Screw the etiquette. Going in. Oh, I do remember I love their sauce though. Mm. Oh no. Their sauce is nice and tangy. The pork is very flavorful. It's not too fatty, not too lean at the same time. You get the hints of the fattiness. You get the hints of the meat. Very nice combination. I love the rub on here as well. It's not super overpowering. It tastes very, very unalicious, you guys. But definitely, if you haven't seen that video, full review will be down in the description. All right, guys, this is turning into a food marathon. Next up, this is from Ke Aloha Seafood. We actually featured him twice now on the channel. You guys see that? It is poke bombs. If you don't know what poke bomb is, it is inari or kon sushi with rice on the inside topped with poke. Also, there's like a spicy ahi sauce. There's the kabayaki sauce also some foodie pocket. I love too that the rice isn't overflowing. It's mostly fish. There is some onions in here though. Cheers guys. Mmm. Mm -hmm. love the spicy sauce. The poke is fresh and the inani has a nice sweetness, a little bit of sourness as well. Hint of umami from the sauces. Ooh, it is spicy. I, I remember Kealoha's spicy sauce. The reason I like this is because it's more on the spicy side. Oh man, the Vons came in clutch <laughs> with the drinks. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff. All right, we're gonna try some awesome drinks. What is this? Uh, they wanted you guys to try out these things too. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Lemonade Squad. They said they really liked your guys' channel, watch you guys. So along with the drinks, they gave you guys ice cream and their. Okay, ice we'll squad. try for dessert. We got the Lemonade Squad, guys. For drinks, we ended up going to the Lemonade Squad. The Vaughn actually went. Yeah, the Vaughn <laughs> actually went for us. But big shout out to the Lemonade Squad for watching us and these awesome drinks. We're super super thirsty so you guys have no idea how much this means to us what is this well, i think mine is a lily koi infused soda was it lily koi mm. yeah lily koi infused soda and amanda's is black a tea. black tea with mango, mango. Man lily koi mango lily koi mango if you guys can't see it, it kind of blended in with my t-shirt but Ooh, it's super refreshing. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta try this. I needed that black tea kick. My brain is overloading you guys with food, just overstimulation, seeing people, meeting people. But yeah, let's try it. Ooh, this is good. Yeah, I like mine better. Is this like a ginger ale type of thing? No, it's just an infused, they call it infused, but it's like a soda infused with syrup. Yeah, Yvonne says she, she's the one that grabbed us the drink. So we're not completely sure what this one is but it tastes kind of like a ginger ale or your ginger, what's that called? On the menu it says Lily Koi infused soda. Oh, and big shout out to the Lemonade Squad for allowing us to try these awesome desserts. We got some popsicles, yeah. we even got some sorbets. Ah, can't wait to try these. There's a ube, pickled mango, and LGB. I'm not sure what LGB means. Lily Koi guava. Banana? Banana? I don't know. I guess we'll try, let's try it. Uh, I'll try the pickled mango one. Okay, let's try These it. These are sorbets. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. It's almost like a ice cake. Cheers. Ooh. This one is Li Hing. But yours is pickled mango, right? Mine tastes like Li Hing mango. It tastes kind of similar. Same. What is LGB? I don't know. 
My hands oh, are gummy bear. Gummy bear. Lihing gummy bear. Oh. That's what it is, exactly. Oh. I was gonna say, I was gonna yeah. pineapple, and I was like, yeah. You said algae gummy. Oh. I think. The pickled mango. Yeah, they're very good, both of them. Perfect for this hot day. But we do want to try the ube one as well, you guys. I love the color of this one. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty. It is such a nice, pretty purple color because of the ube. Ooh. Look at that big chunk I got. Mmm. Mmm. This one's my favorite. It kind of wow. tastes like goody goody. Yeah, it's confusing me because the flavor is so creamy and ube, but then it's like icy. Usually it's supposed to be like, you know, more creamy like uh, ice cream. It is very like goody goody texture. But anyways guys, we are going to be walking around some more. We got more things to show you guys. We only did a fraction of this place. So we'll see you guys when we're walking around. Do you guys have a storefront or just uh... I'm actually an Apple baker. I'm planning on a storefront sometime next year, but I uh, rented a commercial kitchen just so I can make a lot of mac and cheese. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right, guys, the music is really loud, so we're going to try to make this really, really quick. But we went to, where did we go? Rose Cakes Honolulu. Rose Cakes Honolulu. She did say that she's an at-home baker, currently does not have a storefront, but hopefully soon she will. This is their banana pudding. It looks really, really good. You can even see like vanilla wafers in there right here. You can see a banana. You can see the cream. You can see all the layers, and we're super excited to try it out. Well, we found a table, but the table's dirty, so we're going to be standing. Here we go. Show oh, the show the layers. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good representation, but I know it's gonna taste delicious. If you guys don't know, banana pudding is one of my favorite desserts. Ah. Oh. I think my bite is better. Okay. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's creamy. That's delicious. Mm. Guys, it is actually not too sweet. Recently, we actually went to Sugarlina Bake Shop and we got their banana pudding. This one is a lot less sweet, which I personally can appreciate something that's a little less sweet. It is very, very tasty. This is like baby food for adults. Oh man, I can't stop eating this. Vanilla wafers though, I can't really taste it. It just acts more like a sponge and it adds like a vanilla type of flavor to it. Of course, she's also known for her cakes. So of course you gotta get a cake, right? Even though we were tempted to get one of each, we have that locomoco up ahead, so guys, please <laughs> forgive us. Yes, we're counting down, I think we're T minus one hour until we do the locomoco contest. So we're gonna be trying to be light on our stomach, but let's go in for it. You didn't even tell what it was. Oh, it's a Chantilly cake, right? Chantilly cake, Yvonne's choice. Ooh, look at the layers. There you go, guys. You see those layers right there? You see those tiny layers as opposed to this big layers? Whoa! I'm a, I'm a pro. I'm a pro. Don't worry. He almost dropped the whole cake, you guys. And kicked the camera sure. down. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There are so many different kinds of foods. I'm kind of flabbergasted at how many foods we got to try. Personal favorite today was at Bada's Kitchen. I really like that Japanese curry with the brisket. Oh my gosh. I understood. I understood why it was made. Cause I know when you think about it, you're like brisket, curry, why put those combination together? But it's because a lot of times as with Japanese curry, I personally don't like it with um, eating it with beef because the beef gets very chewy because you know, the main thing is the curry, right? You just put in whatever meats you want, you know, for the protein. But with the brisket, it's so tender. You don't even need a knife. You know, it felt like a very cozy, warm food that you want to eat when you're craving, you know, curry at home, right? We're craving something warm and delicious. I loved it. That was probably my, my favorite one for today. The Lemonade Squad, the drinks were so delicious. I tried them all. I loved them all. I'm basically drinking Amanda's drink right now for her. I'm finishing it for her because I asked her for it. It's, uh, I got the Pog Lemonade, which was really sweet. Meat there was really delicious and you know the desserts too from them the sorbets oh my gosh I'm taking them home with me so I, I already asked Felix I actually I didn't even 
and ask for you looks in a matter. I, I just said I was gonna take them all because they're so good. Overall, you know, if you haven't been to this expo, um, definitely, definitely try it out. Uh, go to it. It's only six dollars for admission, and you get to try uh, all the delicious food. And then if you wanna eat more of it, you can buy it and take it home. If you are a uh, a foodie and you really want to try out different foods definitely come here try out the foods it's definitely worth the admission to come when we say organic we mean is we grow it ourselves and we take it to our, our factory and cut it clean it fried in non-gmo canola oil sprinkle sea salt on it in the bag it goes there's not much to it it's simple yeah. but it's it's natural you know it's, yeah. it's natural so you're gonna get it here we go oh yeah yeah hell yeah I think I'll eat the whole bag in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Mm. Mm, this is really addicting. Yeah. I'm gonna try the salmon up here. Oh, what is like, that? Uh, raw fish, like raw fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, so, in American Samoa, you know, poke in Hawaii, um, this is our version of, of poke. It's, that's a oh. fresh uh, pink marlin. And oh. we, we marinate it in um, coconut oil, ginger, oh, uh, there's garlic, there's cucumbers, tomatoes. Are you guys originally from Samoa? Yes. Oh. Yeah. We're, the first, we're the first company to export a product, the first ever product to export from that island. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what is, what is this called again? Boca. Boca? Oka. Oka. Boca without the EM. Oh, okay. oh, Oka. Yeah. This is like the Samoan poke nachos. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. You can really oh. taste the coconut milk. I like the acidity with it, too. Yeah. There's a little bit of lime in there, too. It's really light and fresh tasting. It has a familiar flavor, but not poke. A lot of people say it tastes like ceviche. Oh. Yeah, like ceviche. Yeah. There you go, oh. ceviche, but with coconut. Oh no, I think Amanda found something. They're so cute. I'm like not even into squishmallows, but like... We're just gonna chill, hang out for now, make some room for that local mogul contest, and we're gonna be up there pretty soon, guys. So pretty excited. So stay tuned, guys. Local mogul judging contest coming up. So we got the 411 on what's gonna happen. So we're gonna be judging the local mogul contest. There's gonna be eight different local mogos to try. We're gonna be facing the chefs while they're cooking and when we eat. So the game plan is poker face. We're gonna be completely nothing, no expression. And then that way they don't know what we really think until we can say who is the best local mofo. See you guys when the competition starts. All right, so they called us to take the table, take our seats, guys. This is it. It's a very hard judging criteria here. We got aroma, consistency, color aftertaste presentation first round is three chefs the second round is four chefs you see your paper over here you're going to grade them one to three three being the best two and you can obviously see it's aroma taste we have five different things as soon as they're done cooking we're going to bring them down and you guys can taste we're going to set up the second round okay correction it's seven local mojos today for some reason i'm getting nervous guys i don't know why i'm not even doing cooking I I feel the pressure for our um, awesome cooks here up on the stage. And I believe um, in order to qualify, you cannot be like a restaurant type of business. You have to be at most a food truck or just a, even like a home. These are more like smaller um, businesses. Well, how's everybody doing? Take it's, like it's starting, guys. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. These guys are nervous, so you got to make lots of noise for them. They're going to get 30 minutes to make this local moco. This isn't your ordinary local moco. I understand some of these guys are going to be doing some gourmet, out of the box, different styles of local moco. We got some uh, established panel of judges uh, in front of us right now. These guys are all local moco connoisseurs. They've been doing this professionally uh, almost their whole lives, I think all of them. This is the Eateries. Their goal is to bring awareness and support the local community. Big hand for Amanda and Felix. We're going to start the clock. Once again, they'll have 30 minutes. Uh, to create their local moco. Once they're done, they are going to make three to four dishes for our judges. You're going to bring it right down there when you're done. Even if you finish before the 30 minutes and you're done, so they can taste it while it's hot. All right, let's start the clock. Here we go. Three, two, one. Give them, guys. His name is Corwin. How you doing, Corwin? How long have you been cooking? Uh, probably 25 years. 
Yes. And how long have you been making local mocos? Uh, 2003. Since 2003, that's not that long. I mean, like my yeah. Uh, okay. What's your secret uh, for your local mocha? Why do you think you're gonna win? Uh, I kind of infuse the uh, the burgers in the uh, Caribbean style uh, green sauce. It's the gravy. I always say it's the gravy. All right. And how long you been doing this? You have a restaurant, you have a truck, what's the name of your place? Badass Burgers Hawaii. Badass Burgers Hawaii, yes, we're going to have to see how badass they are in just a little bit. Steven, what are you going to be making or what's your secret? Uh, we're doing a yin yang fish patty. It's going to be a half ma coconut mahi mahi. And the other half is going to be a ahi coconut spicy. Right. For those of you who don't know what a loco moco is, it was invented in the Big Island in the 1950s and 60s, they say, by a couple of surfers. They got out of the water, they didn't have enough money, they went to a restaurant that was closing, and they only had rice and a hamburger patty. That was all that was left. And then the lady who was behind the counter said, I can put some gravy on it. So she put some gravy on the burger, and then he asked for an over easy egg. There's been a big dispute about if it's a local mocha or not, if there's an egg on it or not on it. How many agree that there should be an egg on the loco moco? How many think there shouldn't be an egg on the loco moco? All right, you shouldn't be in Hawaii, right? If there's a... Guys, it Any smells gravy? so good. Some of you gonna go home with gout tonight. Some of you judges will go home with gout. Some of you high blood pressure. If you guys want, you can come take a picture of all the local mocos before they get into them. If you guys want to come get a picture, take a look. Alright guys, so this is a serious competition going on here. The first one, you gotta smell it. Yeah, so the first criteria is aroma guys. We're gonna... That smells good too. This one smells like mushroom. Mushroom and grilled onions. We love it. It's probably really hard to hear us, but we're gonna go in for this one. This one is a traditional local moco. Local moco. We actually did feature them on our channel before. So let's dig in. Hey guys, we can't really show as much emotion as we normally do when we film because we don't want to give it away which one we like more. Right. Ready. No, it's pressure. But you guys can vote as well down below in the comment section which one you thought looked the best. I do taste nice char. The onions are cooked perfectly. I love the addition of mushrooms. I don't get that much beefiness from the patty. It's this, a vegan this one? Only, yeah. Yeah, oh, see, I had a feeling. Yeah, Oh. <laughs> um, I think he's joking. No, he's really vegan though. No, but it's a vegan. It doesn't taste vegan. It, it does. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have that like you know that really beefy, like strong, patty? beefy taste. No. And it, it's it's kind of we had so. the patty before. It's the egg is not vegan, so I guess or in this case, this one it, this one might be vegan egg. Oh, because it's scrambled. Because it's scrambled. Oh. We gotta see. Yeah. No. Wait, the, we're going for the yeah, smell. This is number two. This is um Kealoha's one, Steven. We gotta get this is like egg. fried onions on the top. And the egg too. Ooh, runny egg. I will say this is lacking a gravy. So instead of gravy, he put a kind of like a spicy aioli sauce. Okay, going in. Cheers. That make up a local moco. Right, so the third one we're trying today, guys, is Corwin's local moco or rendition of local moco. And he said it is a Caribbean style. So I'm curious to find out what's the Caribbean. I, I'm sure it's the oh, seasoning on top. This patty, patty is, is kind of hard. This oh, is the this most is traditional a... looking one so far. I'm getting everything all in one bite. I taste the Caribbean seasoning. That Caribbean seasoning works somehow. The patty is a little on the tougher side. Yeah, I think the patty, I like the flavor, but it's very hard. After taste and presentation, our first contestant standing right here in the white t-shirt next to me, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Michael. Contestant number two, please put your hands together for Johnny. Where's Johnny? Contestant number three, put your hands together for Charles. And contestant number four, please put your hands together for Chris. These guys will have 30 seconds to start cooking. That sounds good to me. I'm a pork hash guy. How many of you like pork hash? All right, Johnny, what are you doing with your uh, loco moco? Puerto Rican stuff. 
Puerto Rican style, and what's Puerto Rican style? It'll be on a bed of gandule rice that has ham, gandules, onions, cilantro, and we're gonna top it off with a white gravy instead of a brown gravy. Oh, there you go. Johnny's doing it with some heels on. Johnny, you wanna show everybody your heels? There you go. Oh my God. He bought them from Prince at a thrift shop. Charles, what are you doing with yours? We're going Texas style with some short ribs. Oh. That's it, just short ribs? Yep. I'm gonna cut you red eye gravy with some chocolate. Oh, with some chocolate. He's adding some chocolate to his loco moco over here. Chris, what are we doing with your loco moco down here? It's gonna be a brisket loco moco with a gumbo gravy. Oh my goodness. A gumbo gravy. So what style would you call this? Traditional Creole or Cajun style dish is chicken and andouille sausage with the Holy Trinity. So you got the onions, bell pepper, celery, you got roasted diced tomatoes in there. You basically cook it all up, thicken it with a roux, and it comes out like any type of a stew, like a beef stew or a pastelli. Look at that. We got some interesting stuff going on. Oh okay. my gosh. Let's do this one first. This okay, one is okay. number eight. I forgot where I'm, where I'm at. The gumbo. And he even gave us utensils, you guys. It smells so smoky as well. All I can smell is beef rib. Don't pay attention to that I, one yet. I, that's really hard. Look at this monstrosity in front of us. How you doing, Johnny? This one's a gumbo. Let's get into oh, it. Gumbo and short rib. I see chunks also in here. Mm. I smell the spices and the celery. Oh. Poker face. I do like the gumbo. I love the gravy. The gravy is a bit spicy as well. This is the first one with the spice. And this is the first one that has actually enough gravy. How we like it, gravy all over. They did this spicy. one, right? It's like simmered down, shredded beef, mm. and short rib. And do the sausage in there. Right, and do the sausage. Time. Johnny's doing Puerto Rican. Let's smell this one. Judges, how we doing? Good. It smells amazing. Oh, so this is Charles's Texas style. As you can see, everything in Texas is bigger. Charles brought a little bit of Texas here to Hawaii. Number seven. Look at that egg, it's just dangling. Even the, the rib is just dangling. Wow, okay. We're getting into it. Okay, can Please you put take it, it off? down. No, please. you gotta take it off, the meat. Oh my goodness, you guys. It's just coming straight off. Just pork tender, off the bone. This is a swinging pendulum of flavor. I love swinging meats like that. Like, it's just a massive thing of meat in my face. Please not. Don't. No more innuendos. Cheers. Poker face, poker face. I think this is the most traditional gravy so far. Very beefy. Interesting though, you know, this one is the one with the chocolate. This one, presentation is 10 out of 10. The brisket does have a, a smoky aftertaste, so we gotta cleanse the palate. I don't know if I'm sweating gravy or sweating meat. The next one I think I'm gonna go in. This one is number number four. This is the pork hash one. Yeah, this one is very interesting. I'm trying to imagine what a pork hash loco moco would taste like. I love the addition sure. of the crispy, what is this, wonton chips? Presentation is very nice in this Ooh. one. Oh wow, it looks a, like a very different kind of yeah, trying to get one everything. This is very interesting. Very familiar Asian like flavors. Right off the bat, I think this is my favorite. It has a meaty, porky flavor without being too meaty. You know how I'm not really a big meat person? And it has like bits of shrimp in there. The gravy is a nice brown gravy. The not egg, enough gravy though, you gotta admit that. Not enough gravy, but the patty is very, very moist, I will say. I didn't smell this one yet, actually. Mm, yeah. Okay, next we're gonna go in number five. This is the Puerto Rican style. Johnny is the chef. He said he's originally from Puerto Rico, so we're gonna try that out. The presentation is so amazing. He even brought his own plate. This is probably the prettiest one. The beef rib is the sexiest one, and this is the prettiest one, so. <laughs> Yeah, I can see this being served at like a restaurant. And it's uh, very interesting, he put like these um, beef concentrate, these little dots on top of his white style gravy. So if you like the more traditional beefy gravy, you can also mix it up to make the brown gravy. Okay, I gotta get a little bit of everything. I just wanna try the rice, I mean the sauce first, the gravy. I'm gonna this get is a everything all together. Okay. Oh, that gravy. Patty's a little hard. Hey guys. Our votes have been casted. 
Comment down below which one you think deserves the title of Local Moku King. And stay tuned for the winner. First place is going to get $500 and a prize pack. Second place getting $200 and a prize pack. Third place getting $100 and a prize pack. We've got to thank Rainbow Drive-In and No Foods. Big round of applause for these guys. Coming in third place, very close, by one point only, with the Fish Loco Moco. Big round of applause for Steve. In second place, very close, making the Pork Hash Loco Moco. Big round of applause for Michael. There you go, Michael. Congratulations, good job, my man. All right, in first place, getting $500. Beat out Michael by one point, making the Gumbo Loco Moco. Big hand for Chris. Congratulations, my man. There you go. We have one more day of this. Make sure you check out all the booths. Support all the local companies. Thank you guys for coming out. See you guys next time. Aloha. All right, Foodie Ohana, that about wraps up today's episode of the new product and food show here at the Blaisdell Center. For the annual 2022 food and product show, we had such a great time. Thank you guys so much for having us. And big shout out to Lanai and Reed for inviting us to be the Local Moco Contest judge. What an honor, honestly. And we love Local Mocos. And we've tried a bunch of the places that were featured today. Big fans of a lot of them. So. Yeah, we're super, super happy that we were able to participate and congratulations to the winners. And of course, big mahalo to all the subscribers we ran into, all the food vendors. It was epic and fun. And also guys, because of your guys' support, we're able to do these kind of things. And honestly, we really want to thank all of our supporters out there as well. It's just so great to have you guys and we truly appreciate every single one of you. And yeah, we just had an awesome time today. It was just very fun. Oh, and also <laughs> let us know, were you surprised at who the winner was or did you think that would have been your favorite as well? So my favorite local moco was honestly the pork hash local moco. I know, surprising. It was very, very different, but felt very nostalgic and it just tasted really good. I do wish there was a little bit more gravy. When I heard pork hash, I did not think what it was going to taste like. And I was even telling Felix, like it tasted something very familiar, kind of like how my grandma would make um, fish patties with shrimp and pork and stuff before. It just had a very nostalgic factor. For me, my favorite was, of course, you guys already knew, the beef rib, huge monstrosity dinosaur meat, only because I love meat. Come on, guys. <laughs> you know, you already know I'm biased, but also that one had the best gravy, in my opinion. It did. And that was, in my opinion, the best tasting one. I thought they all were taste good and were all very creative. Thank you so much for coming along on today's foodie adventure. We had so much fun. Make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up for supporting local businesses and local chefs. And if you have not already, hit that subscribe button down below. It's the easiest way to support us. It's completely free. And we welcome all of you, anyone from all walks of life to join our Foodie Ohana so that we all together can support our local community. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Video. All right, Foodie Ohana, until the next one. Eat your local oh, grind. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> she actually did it. Oh, you told me to. Eat your local grind. Eat your local vocals. Eat your local snacks. Support local. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Neither have we. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Smoking us. She I'm drooled. Really Amanda drooling. just drooled. <laughs> what the? She's just drooling on her arm. I'll just be the food holder for today's episode. Can I talk about this one now? Sure. You talk, I eat. I'm more of a brisket gal, so. Gal? Guy. I said guy. <laughs> you want so Amanda thought this was a table, guys. I did not. Anyway. Oh, Vaughn is on it. Should we go over there then? Vaughn secured us a table. Yay, thanks Vons. Oh yeah, gosh. Okay. I, I can't even see. <laughs> Bro. Alright, um I forgot where we were. Yeah, oh. where are we at? Okay, we're, oh, we're try at this, this one. Till the next one. Oh, isn't that? Oh yeah. ew, can I do it? I didn't yeah. know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alright, I didn't know. Right after I say until the next and one. And make sure you like football, you know, like boom, you know, like <laughs> tackle him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Eat your local oh, grind. <laughs> 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 she actually did it. I told you to. Bro, she actually did it. That was hilarious. <laughs> I think I almost fell. That's the first time I ever seen that in my life. Oh, my bad.